Hey everyone, how's it going? It's That Nerd Ryan here, and for Movie Night today, we're going to be talking about The Dark Knight Returns. So we are still doing DC animated films, obviously. Um, next week we're going to be doing Harry Potter, so I figured let's talk about what is considered one of the best Batman comics of all time in its cinematic form. So this is part one. Uh, we'll do part two next month. So this is the first half of The Dark Knight Returns, um, where we see the Dark Knight actually return. Uh, I have no idea what part two entitles. I know it's something to do with the Joker and something to do with Superman. Uh, but this one takes place when Batman is 55. So it's about 10 years after his last appearance. Um, so from context clues, this is a alternate timeline where Bruce quit after Jason got murdered. I could be wrong, but it sounded like that's what they were saying when they're like, too bad with everything with Jason. Um, but yeah, it's an alternate timeline where he quit after Jason got murdered or he got too dark and had to stop, uh, which is where he was going without Tim Drake. So this is like a non-Tim Drake timeline. He's only had Dick Grayson and Jason Todd, and he fell out with Dick Grayson. Um, so basically... Bruce is trying to find purpose in his life. He's doing races where he's getting purposely into crashes. He's uh, trying to pick fights with thugs, just as Bruce Wayne. Um, and Gotham itself is deteriorating into a new madness uh, due to this gang called the Mutants. The Mutants are trying to run Gotham uh, and kill any political figure that gets in their way and stuff like that. Jim Gordon is also getting ready to retire. Uh, so basically what happens is Bruce sees all this bad stuff going on and everything and decides it's time to come back. So on his first night he stops a bunch of crimes in progress, one being the potential attack on two girls uh, from the mutants. He takes them out. Uh, he also takes out a bunch of other mutants um, and everything and then just some petty criminals. Um, at that, we're introduced to the Robin of this movie. I forgot her name already. Um, but yeah, she was one of the girls that was about to get attacked and is inspired by Batman to be the next Robin. She starts training herself and everything. We can see bits and tidbits of it. Her parents don't care, uh, which we'll, we're going to talk about stuff like that in a minute because they do get... That her parents are hippie stoners that don't care about her. Um, but we're going to get into Alan Moore politics a little bit. I like to stay away from politics, but when this movie was unnecessarily kind of filled with the politics, I feel I do want to bring it up. Um, anyways, so she starts training... Alfred, who's somehow still alive, is still trying to talk Bruce out of being Batman again, which completely understand. And Bruce is just going out and fighting the mutants and everything, and basically picks a fight with the leader. Um, he takes his bat Batmobile, which is literally, I was going to say Bat Tank, it is a Bat Tank in this, um, and tries to fight the mutants all at once, where he picks a fight with the leader. And they're pretty evenly matched at this point. Bruce is pretty bloodied up um, and is saved by the new Robin. If she wasn't there, he would have died. Um, and they get took in, taken back to the Batcave as the leader gets arrested um, to heal up and start Robin's training. In that, the uh, leader is thrown in jail where he goes to talk to the mayor, or the, where the mayor goes to talk to him, and the mayor ends up dead. Uh, he slaughters the mayor in there and everything. Who I think was, I thought was voiced by Seth MacFarlane, but isn't. Sounds exactly like him, it's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so the new mayor wants to ensure that Batman doesn't come back. Um, I will say there is a introduction scene of Batman that is that the Dark Knight Rises completely ripped off of like the old cop and the young pop, cop seeing Batman for the first time. The only difference is in The Dark Knight Rises, it's the old cop that wants to put Batman away, and in The Dark Knight Returns, it's the young cop. Uh, so it's a little bit of a role reversal, but I mean, it's still a pretty good scene. 
Um, but yeah, so anyways, Batman decides to rematch the mutants, so they find a way to break the leader out of jail, and he uses Robin to cohort all of the mutants into this one area um, where the leader breaks out and Batman decides to fight him. Um, and he obliterates him. He has a very amazing line in this, which is, you don't get it, son. This isn't a mud hole. It's an operating table. And I'm the surgeon. Which is such a great line. And he finishes him off. Um, I do want to say, like, I forgot to mention, him coming, Batman coming back was because Two-Face, who just got facial or reconstruction surgery, started, um doing crime again, so Batman had to stop him. We do get to see little snippets of other villains, such as the Joker, in this. I, I'm sorry that I forgot to mention that, because I do want to mention at the end. Uh, but yeah, so... Um, he beats the mutants, who become the sons of Batman, and um, during the closing part of it, he uh, we get to see the Joker finally move and like get back to his old self by watching the news about Batman returning. So that's where the movie ends. Uh, there's really quick how I want to bring this up. Uh, the Dark Knight Returns is very neutral when it comes to politics. It plays both sides. Uh, but I feel that it playing both sides kind of makes it one sound very preachy and two, makes it feel unnecessary. Uh, we get snippets of the news showing back and forth um, about, like, Batman coming back, about people fighting about it, and it gets to, like, let's use $10 words to sound smart in the scene sort of thing, um, where it just comes off as condescending, and uh, it can be, like, reflected of back in the day and today's politics of like what they're talking about and it's again like I, I'm not saying I didn't understand what they were talking about I understood that they're saying that Batman brings the villains or do the villains bring Batman sort of argument but they're like talking about it as if you know Bin Laden came back sort of thing and it's like, and there's even to a point where they're calling Batman a fascist and stuff like that. It's like, I don't, it, it's like that meme of like, I keep hearing you say that word and I don't think you know what it means, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, like that, and then like, we get to see Robin's parents, like we get to hear them. And like, they're talking about like, stuff that actually went on recently in 2020 kind of in a sense that like there's a part where a mutant tries to kill Gordon and the news spins it that like the like it was a Gordon being extra violent I'm not saying I'm not saying that what happened in 2020 was exactly like that I'm just saying that how the news tries to spin it and the parents are like yeah it's just like Chicago God, this place is turning into fascism. And, like, it's like pointing out, like, yeah, cops are brutal and everything sometimes, and, like, agreeing with it. But it's also, like, it's coming from somebody that does nothing to society. So, like I said, it's that whole yin and yang of, like, I'm going to talk about politics, I'm going to share my pol political message, but I'm also going to share the other sides at the same time. So it's very conflicting when it comes to the politics of it, where it's like, are you supposed to be agreeing with these people or not? Because they're saying stuff that is pretty accurate, but are also saying it as if they are not, and being portrayed as if they are not to be rooted for. So it's like, what are you trying to say sort of thing? Uh, but other than that, I thought the voice acting in this was phenomenal. I thought the fights were great. Uh, the only other issue I had was that the mutants kind of talked really stupid. Uh, and, I mean, I get it, they're the villain, they're kind of supposed to, but 
like their slang and everything was just kind of dumb. Um, but I thought an older Batman, a more brutal Batman was really cool. I can't wait to see the next part. Uh, so I'm going to give this a 8 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell. And follow me on all my social media down below. It's That Nerd Ryan, signing off.